This past week, I had the opportunity to play a work in progress development build of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I got to delve into almost all the major gameplay features and get a glimpse into what the full version will look like. First off, I have no desire to spoil any aspects of the storyline outside of what is already known and being marketed with the main playable characters, so don't worry, you're in spoiler free terrain with this video. However, I will be talking about most major gameplay features and mechanics, so if you want the whole game to be a surprise, this probably isn't the video for you. Just a warning. First off, it's worth noting I was flown out to Sydney by the very kind people over at Ubisoft Australia to play Odyssey. They've always been big supporters of my channel, and being invited to play the game and give feedback is something I don't take for granted. However, I want to be clear in saying that that has no impact on me giving an honest and thoughtful review of what I have played thus far. Again, of course, the build I played was a work in progress and everything is subject to change. With all the disclaimers out of the way, let's get into the video. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, for the first time in the franchise's history, is a game I think is actually being held back by it having the titled moniker of Assassin's Creed in front of its subtitle, Odyssey. If you sold the game as an ancient Greece open world RPG, I think the buzz and excitement surrounding this game would be insane. I myself am a massive fan of the historical setting and I've always been a fan of the history having studied much of it growing up. Heck, one of my favourite movies ever is Wolfgang Peterson's rendition of Troy. So it's definitely something on the surface that should excite me. However, with the game being an Assassin's Creed title, that comes with an already established universe and lore over a decade old featuring 10 main title games and countless extended universe media. So as a hardcore fan of the franchise for many years, the most important thing with any of these titles is for them to coexist. Odyssey does not appear to do that. With new RPG mechanics including choosing your own character and having dialogue options, there are massive lore contradictions to established animus tech and reliving history as it happened, which is the foundation of Assassin's Creed games. So as much as the setting and game type is very exciting to me, I find myself completely torn with the direction of this game, so getting to play it myself was very important to see how it looked at this point. Overall, the build I played was mostly what I expected the game to be, a fun, open world, ancient Greece RPG, with small bugs and faults to be expected in an unpatched work in progress build. As well as an unclear connection though to the Assassin's Creed universe. My worry with Odyssey has always been its dispassionate connection with the established lore of the games and that still remains after playing it. We know the Assassin Order is established almost 400 years after these events, so why is this an Assassin's Creed game? That still I don't know and until I play the full game, I guess I won't. I want to go into more detail about all the major features of the game I experienced and briefly touch on the things I did not see that I feel worth noting as some of them are met with concern from me. What I got to see was what looks like an early portion of the game's story, picking the character I played as Alexios by the way for your information, and what happened that led him to being a disgraced Spartan and now a mercenary. The game then takes you through quests that introduce you to the world, new mechanics, features, and establishes where the story is likely going, as most Assassin's Creed games tend to do at the start. I got to experience the new combat system, upgrade system, customization, naval, and travel across the new open world terrain, doing side activities. Graphically, the game looks beautiful. I was playing on a PS4 Pro, whereas I usually play on a day one Xbox One, so I'm not sure if I just wasn't used to the look of that comparison with my eyes, but it definitely appeared to me that this is an upgrade from the look of Origins, for the most part. A key new feature I think is a huge plus from me came right at the beginning. After choosing your gameplay difficulty, you have the choice to pick Guided Mode or Exploration Mode. The Exploration Mode is quoted as, this is the way Assassin's Creed Odyssey is meant to be experienced. This mode allows players to discover the objectives with the help of clues, so when you are searching for a target or finding a new area, the game will give you clear clues on where to go without giving you a direct UI marker to travel to. This created a far more immersive experience as a player and gave the use of the eagle a clearer mechanical approach to gameplay. This feature does not make it difficult to find your objective, by the way, it is actually very easy. The bonus of the feature comes from actually paying attention to the world and your surroundings to find the objective, and not just following the UI marker that leads you everywhere. Therefore, it keeps you engaged from going from point A to point B on the map between objectives. 
It's a feature I feel might go under the radar and unappreciated, so I definitely thought it was worth bringing up now. In this work in progress build, I got to see an introduction to Alexios, his living situation on the island of Cephalonia, where he had been living since becoming a disgraced Spartan in his earlier life. Of which, I'll of course leave any of those story spoilers well away from this video. Alexios seems to be living a guilt-free relaxed life as a mercenary at this point, until of course complications come and sweep him off on a new adventure. During that early period of the game, however, I got to be introduced to all the major gameplay mechanics and features, the open world RPG mechanics, naval combat, and of course customization, all of which I will make individual videos on in the coming weeks going through how they all work and my deeper thoughts on them. The first of these features I want to talk about is the open world. I can't say enough of how enormous this game looks. In scope and in size, I got exhausted just looking through the map and seeing all the locations. Though that is a blessing and a curse. Yes, the game has been packed with side content and things to do, but none of what I saw was majorly innovative or game-changing. Much of it is very much the same as Origins. You have a region, in that region smaller areas, and in those several smaller locations. Bandit camps, hidden caves, animal lairs, and towns, in which you have objectives to complete, finding collectibles, and killing high-ranking NPCs. This is something that eventually gets old, and just having lots of it in a game doesn't necessarily make the open world that exciting or filled with innovative content. Then again, I didn't see all of the new locations that were on offer, at least I hope not. The world is once again full of side missions, with people in the world to help with their problems, some of which you can find on mercenary job bulletin boards in towns and villages. A new feature to the open world is the mercenary system much of which is a reskin combination of the Falakatai from Origins and the Nemesis system from the Middle Earth games, where you can track them on a mercenary menu and see what ones are after you and what ones are not, as I battled a couple in my time playing as I walked around the map, while I also ran into ones that weren't after me but came up to me with their symbol as a white marker on the map. He actually had dialogue with me telling me to be careful as some other mercenaries were looking for me. I thought that was a nice touch. I'm not a massive fan of the system, but I do see it as an improvement from the Falakata system in Origins. Odyssey is a world filled with mercenaries for hire, and it is dependent on your actions in the world as to which ones are trying to hunt you down, so I did like the story element to there being mercenaries around the map searching for you depending on your actions specifically. Traversing the world again is very much the same as Origins, though again zero explanation is given as to why the character is a master at free running and climbing, which is such an overlooked thing to me with these games. It just doesn't make sense why this Greek mercenary can climb every building and cliff like a master and do a leap of faith which wasn't established until Origins as a trait of the Magi. Speaking of being like Origins, once again your character has a pet eagle named Icarus. Explained by being a blessing from the gods to Alexios, of which gameplay wise works exactly the same as Origins, targets enemies and points of interest. A cool feature that really feels out of place in the universe now, where we have a character in the past that has a pet eagle, to do it once is one thing, but then to do it in the next game again sort of becomes diluted as a feature and really doesn't make sense as a story. Moving on to the navel now, I only really got a small amount of time to test it out. The combat is a bit simplistic as of the time period, with your attacks being limited to arrows, javelin throws for a heavy shot, and ramming. All of which are upgradable and customizable, but for a game with such a naval focus, I can see it getting old very quickly. But I hope that deeper into the customization with your crew and ship you go, there will be more of a sense of longevity to it. But I'm not totally optimistic. A massive feature of Odyssey is of course the RPG elements of the game, player choice mattering and having a greater impact on the overall game. Now again, I haven't played the entire finished game, but from what I saw, these decisions do not have a massive impact in the general open world. What you say and your attitude matter in the moment of the quests, but have little consequences outside of that. The only feature I saw was the notoriety system level changing depending on some choices and that leads into then the mercenary system. Which is a little frustrating, as having these choices totally negates the lore of Assassin's Creed. One of those choices had to have happened in history, so what is the canon to the universe and what isn't? The Animus is reliving memories, not changing history. It isn't a time machine. I don't see a major reason yet to have the addition of dialogue options in the game, other than for a new gameplay feature to the world. But only time will tell. 
The combat system hasn't changed much from Origins. In fact, I thought the Origins combat system was the best in the Assassin's Creed franchise as of now. I really didn't think much had to be changed. However, there are some additions and differences. Some I like and some I don't. There's no shield now. Instead, you either are using a two-handed weapon or dual wielding a light weapon and the Spear of Leonidas. With that comes a heavy focus on parrying in combat, something I wouldn't have an issue with other than it's done using a two button system. So you have to hit both left and right bumpers to parry, which I found quite a nuisance in the heat of combat. I'd much prefer it as a one button approach. The other change is the flow of combat. So to dodge, counter and strike. In Origins, you could go to strike and mid move, dodge away as you notice an enemy coming to attack you as well. In Odyssey, the dodging is less effective, as once you commit to a strike, you can't then dodge out of it if you see an enemy coming to attack you that might be quicker than you. Hopefully that's something that changes before the final release of the game, as it really made the combat a bit jarring and broke the flow of combat a lot for me, especially when I'm so used to the origin systems in a way. An addition I liked was the abilities portion, of having special combat moves and perks to use. Whether it be the Spartan Kick, a bull charge at groups of enemies, or just a form of an adrenaline mode, it flowed easily in the combat and gave good new combinations of moves that you can chop and change to suit how you play. Though some were a bit unrealistic and fantastical for my liking, but the early ones I found worked really well. Now probably the best part of my time with Assassin's Creed Odyssey was delving into the customization features of the game. Being said in ancient Greece, there is nothing more fun than building an awesome looking warrior. There were even, at the early stages of the game, ample pieces of armor and equipment that I saw you could wear and weapons to wield. The items ranking system is back from common, rare, to legendary, etc. As well as the ability to upgrade your equipment levels at the blacksmith. This includes the addition of crafting specific perks to weapons and armor pieces, rather than coming automatically and being set like in Origins. There is a lot of customization options for your character armor, weapons, playstyle and abilities, as well as your ship. I always find with Assassin's Creed games that though there is always customization options, I really don't like the look of most of the outfits outside of the original robes. Odyssey, to me, had a lot of great looking armor sets to go between. I'm excited to delve more into that at the higher levels of gameplay when the game is finally done. Before I wrap up this video, I did want to address features I didn't see while playing the game that I feel are worth mentioning and that I can't really give my full opinion on yet. The main one being the mythological aspect to this game, an aspect that is a little alarming to me. In Origins, we saw many mythological features with the Curse of the Pharaohs and Trials of the Gods, which were explained as illusions of the Pieces of Eden and Animus glitches. That I can live with as it does not ruin any established sort of lore. While in Odyssey, there has not been a full explanation as to the roles of the mythological creatures. We have seen in a previous demo that an apple of Eden turns a woman into Medusa, which isn't really how the apple works. So it is things like that that I want to know more about, but am yet to see myself in actual gameplay. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not yet to see deeper connections to the overall Assassin's Creed universe in this game, and I don't know what role it plays in any overarching narrative. Not that there is really an overarching narrative anymore. Also, I didn't get towards any high level gameplay obviously, as I was playing the early portion of the story, so I'm not sure what the end game or high level mechanics to combat and customizations are at this point. Overall, I had a good time playing Odyssey as I expected. The gameplay brings all the same fun of Origins, as well as the additions of deeper customization. Though the combat flow was a bit jarring to get used to, and there were some technical hiccups throughout with facial animations in side missions that just aren't quite up to par. But, as an ancient Greece open world RPG, the game has a lot going for it. All the concerns from me are still with the story and lore and their connection to the overall Assassin's Creed universe. And until I played the whole game, I won't know whether I'm wrong or right, though I suspect the latter. In terms of gameplay, I feel it runs better than maybe some earlier demos suggested, and I didn't experience any glitches that were game altering. But I do have to say that, to me, it's pretty clear Odyssey is not as polished a game as Origins was last year, and that's a bit of a shame, as I mentioned with facial mechanics and dialogue, cutscenes, and just some general gameplay tidiness with the flow to combat and the naval. I would like to have seen more time given to the development of Odyssey, even if it was just until early 2019. However, I do have to reiterate again that this was a work-in-progress build I was playing, so things can change. 
All right, I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this video. It was a long one, but I wanted to go through everything and make sure I addressed all of the people's queries and concerns during this video uh, that I wouldn't have to then go to the comments and do it later. And then don't forget to subscribe as I have plenty of videos coming out in the coming weeks from my session playing Odyssey. I hope you enjoyed this work in progress game impression sort of review and I will see you very soon for more videos.